Hey, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Jeremy Sisto is here with us, hey. man from FBI. What's how are up? you? Good, how are you? How's everything going in your life right now? Things are going. They're pretty good. It's got, suddenly got cold here in New York. Yeah. Um, but uh, not in my apartment. They boosted up the heat. Cranked it was like 100 heat. degrees <laughs> last night. Uh, I was watching, uh, I couldn't sleep, so I, I was watching Castle Rock. First season oh, nice. Castle Rock. What and do you I think? I fell asleep. It's cool. Yeah. It's, it's cool. It's not usually the, genre, the kind of genre that I'm drawn towards, but... Uh, not not a good show to dream to. I fell asleep to mm, yeah. it. That's some creepy music. It's a rough one. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> dreams were a little out there. What is the genre you're usually drawn to? Um, kind of character sort of stuff. Uh, you know, I, I mean, totally all over the board, but uh, things that are kind of um, take their time uh, and are kind of based more in psychology um, as opposed to um, um, things that are kind of things that are sci-fi or mm -hmm. fantasy, a little darker. That are outside my, yeah. my realm of understanding, I have trouble investing in. I gotcha. Um, so anything with a dragon is hard for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm out on dragons too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know Games of Thrones is amazing, but uh, it just takes me a lot. It's, if I can't relate to it, it's got to directly relate to me. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Well, FBI is probably interesting in that category, so how does this one directly relate to you? Um, you know, FBI, I mean, you know, the... the, the um, the category of show this is the procedural mm -hmm. this you know trying to the audience is the that the tunes in for these shows they're very smart they they are tracking these kind of mysteries and they want to get ahead of the story and it's almost like a puzzle um but i'm not quite smart enough for these shows <laughs> like i can't follow all <laughs> there's the names a lot going and stuff, on in you know what I mean? yeah. i'm like just stick on this scene where you're just hanging <laughs> so out i'm just gonna hang out here <laughs> in <the> court, yeah. <laughs> yeah but uh but it's it's a really it's a really smart show and um and it's it's got a uh it's got a uh, a nice twist to the genre um and i think it's something that hasn't quite been told in sort of such a uh, realistic manner in the sense that they're really kind of showing how this New York office of the FBI works yeah. and uh, their connectivity and sort of how they operate within uh, connection, their connection with other organizations. And, um, and so, and it, it also you know, talks about the human toll of, uh, of the job. And, uh, but it has, uh, it has that uh, amazing ability that these shows and Dick's shows can tend to have, which is, uh, they translate into whatever culture is going on, so this thing can be around in 15 years. Every episode is talking about a different, uh, a, a different thing in the world, different, um, different types of people, um, situations that uh, that turn sour in life, and, and they can really talk about a lot of different themes. And uh, and so, um, so yeah, I think it's a it's a good school show. We're, we're really excited to be making it every day. We show up, you know. Uh, my my job is I'm like head of the headquarters mm -hmm. and sort of uh, and that part of the storytelling is 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 uh, is a real challenge for the writers to be able to really represent how uh, how these guys operate how they how they are able to um, you know get to the conclusions they get to in uh, the uh, limited amount of time that they take to do it and and uh, and to be able to use that huge resource uh, of the FBI. Um, in a genre where it's vital that you get from one clue to the next right. in a real clear uh, way is something that uh, the writers and you know uh, us on set are, are you know are trying to are trying really hard to try to to, to um, sort of show and uh, you know we have a ton of background actors that are playing all the agents and, and a lot of different people, people in the yeah. room and and so it becomes this uh, uh, this really interesting. Um, job of trying to figure out how to create that character and make that character make sense and uh, and and have the audience understand how it works and so we like showing up you know that's, that's awesome uh, yeah so you mentioned a bunch of different things there what has been the biggest challenge for you in, in building out this character in this show yeah I mean well right now we're uh, you know it, it kind of it changes mm -hmm. depending on you know sort of Whatever, what what seems to be um, important at the time, and and for me right now is is really focusing on um, on how uh, the the, uh, the 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 people in the jock, the different agents, and um, how um, how they're how we're showing that, you know, how our guest stars who play um, sort of heads of teams, mm -hmm. uh, agents, and analysts, and you know, head of the NCA or a representative from, from the NSA or different organizations, 
how they are connected to all the other people in the background of this jock, because everyone in this room is supposed to be working on this one crime. And so, uh, so you know, it's, 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 it's my, my performance is really connected to what everyone in the room is doing. And so, uh, so I've, I've, I've gotten more involved with um, our super talented AD team who are the ones that create that background uh, noise and that background storylines. And so, um, so that's, that's kind of what's, what's fun for me right now is trying to take this information, how to explain it in a way that's clear, and also kind of uh, try to illustrate um, how this large group of people can all be working on the same case in a way that's fluid and realistic and and you know it just that's that that's that's a um, that's a challenge that I think is you know, something that is fun to focus on because sometimes we'll hit it right on sometimes we won't okay. and to a certain degree sometimes it's not completely necessary like sometimes we're working too hard we're like, mm. yeah, we don't need to you, we got it. you know you know it's yeah, fine yeah. we got this information. But uh, but that that sort of uh, and then sometimes you watch an episode and you're like nope something in the background maybe we should work with it and so that keeps it interesting for me you know? yeah you're constantly thinking about it which yeah. is pretty cool yeah and it's kind of a sort of a strange challenge of, right you know it's not usually the actor's challenge to try to like figure out how you know my stuff fits in mm -hmm. with all of these background a actors and, uh, and guest stars and stuff but. It does feel a little like you know you're on a football team and you're right. trying to like you know all use put all the everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a puzzle. That's cool. Right. So most importantly, what does your daughter think about you on the show? Uh, they they like <laughs> it. Yeah. My 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 son uh, my son's into it. He's got a uh, a junior FBI badge. Oh, nice. There you go. He shows anyone with a uniform. Make a dad proud. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's. Uh, I think they're pretty. I think they're pretty kind of. They're pretty. Um, not impressed, but. It's kind of a cool job to have to be FBI. I think it's so. It's like not yeah. a real FBI. <laughs> it's <laughs> even better than real FBI, Absolutely. except not nearly as, um, uh, you know, uh, useful in life <laughs> to be the actor FBI. But I've FBI friends now. So there you go. I can make a in call. some special circles now. Like, yeah, Don't yeah. worry, guys. You get into trouble. I got some people I can give a ring to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know. I, it, I think they think my job is more serious than it is mm. because of, uh, because of the, title. the seriousness of the show. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in terms of like the coolness of your jobs you've had over the years, that one's got to rank pretty high in terms of how it stacks up with your kids. I think it works pretty well for them right now. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not like too showy. It's right. not too. It's. Uh, it's. I don't know. There's. I think something. Something about it is, feels. You know serious enough for them to you know have me I'd, I'd be an actor but I'm not all up in their business with right. it on posters and stuff like this so. yeah I think it's like the perfect balance yeah it's, it's a nice, nice balance yeah. well we were talking off camera about clueless and you think about this character compared to that character mm -hmm. in the high school culture and all yeah. the popular girls and stuff like that like that was such yeah. a different time but even like what that character represents like totally different how your kids connect with that character compared to this character what's that totally. like for you yeah, it's funny. I, I don't know. It's uh, to some degree, my daughter doesn't talk to me too much about the social dynamic mm -hmm. at school because she knows I'm concerned about it. Right. You know, yeah. she knows it, I'm really thing. concerned. Yeah, I'm sure. like big in the inclusivity, mm -hmm. and and you know, the ten, there is a little clickiness in, in you know the fifth grade, um, and uh, she knows I don't like that, but she knows I'm also. Just concerned about it, so she, she tells me stuff, but uh, uh, but at the same time she knows she has to parse it out, and uh, and so I, I you know I haven't I haven't watched Clueless in uh, in the respect of trying to figure out, but I, th I think it's a fairly positive, fairly positive uh, you know idea of that about trying to help people, and but it still is this concept of you know some kids are mm -hmm. better than others, sure. or this hierarchy of stuff that uh, makes me sad because yeah. only yesterday they were just you know she's still a kid but like right. two two years ago you know they're there all wasn't, just the same there's not that, that. Yeah. we're all just cool <laughs> right you're not thinking about like family situations yeah. who you're friends with and no you, we're all just play you show up at work yeah. and you're learning and you're playing right. and then suddenly this different like maturity thing shows up and where uh, a few kids are kind of like taking more more space mm -hmm. Make another curve, keep people feel not quite as good. Right, and this is and fifth I grade, too. I know. It's crazy, but that's when it really starts to get going. And I mean, it can be damaging. It yeah, can be, I mean, sure. if you, you know, I, I, I had some tough years in school where uh, I was like, you know, at a new school and couldn't quite figure out that whole mm -hmm. dynamic. And 
And that stuff can stay with you for a long sure, time, you yeah. know what I mean? Where you're like, you know, I had a couple of years there where I was somehow told in that dynamic that I wasn't as good as other kids. And, uh, and uh, that can be something you have to overcome later on in life. So. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks yeah, to have to go it does, through it. You know, I know. And to see kids going through it too, especially after your experiences, it's yeah. not easy to separate your experience from their experience at times. Totally. I was just talking to you know, a family member who's 20 years old, and, and he had a tough time in school. And, um, and he's like, you know, I just I'm, I feel insecure. He's mm -hmm. like, I feel like, uh, um, like uh, not as good as other people. I'm yeah. like, it's because of these. You spend a couple of years of those those uh, that time in your life when you're so impressionable, and you're kind of told that you're not as good as. It can define. Of course, things. that's yeah. a long time. You're dealing sure. with that stuff, yeah. and uh, you know, people say kids are resilient and things, and. But uh, but I, I think uh, I, th I think the opposite. I think I think yeah, we're resilient. But I think uh, you know that that kind of psychological sort of uh, stuff can uh, affect your life for a long time. So sure. I'm I'm trying to trying to trying to avoid some of that stuff with them by being involved. But I can't. Yeah. I mean, I can't. It's no, just kind of the dynamic that that goes along with it. And my wife's like, just relax. It's, everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, you know, I take things yeah. too like too much. You're totally in your head about it. Yeah, yeah I completely. get it. Well, the psychological stuff is interesting because you think about just the acting business in general. It's mm. like there's going to be some great highs. There's going to be some struggles, some lows. And like, oh, yeah. how do you not get defined by that stuff? And how have you built this thing out? Like, what do you totally. think have been the important things for you along the way? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's it's interesting, you know. This my cousin I was talking to yesterday too. He's a he's a really talented musician, mm -hmm. and and I was saying, and he's he's like, oh, I really want to, you know. He's talking about his music, and I'm like, you know, sometimes success in that realm uh, can sort of uh, you know bandaid over some other insecurities, and and then make you you know farther away from being able to kind of, you know, rise to who you want to be. Mm -hmm. you know, they can make you, in, you know, your insecurities can t make you into a jerk, you know. Sure. Uh, if you are like, if you can put on top of it, oh, but I'm super talented. and, and Trying to overcompensate. Yeah, yeah, and acting is a huge one at that. I mean, you see it happen all the time. Um, uh, I, f for me, it was always... It was always the opposite. It was always like any success I had would make me kind of more insecure or mm -hmm. more humble or, you know. Um, um, and so, uh, you know, but that said, I, I got so much, I had so much luck along the way. I got, you know, you know, um, uh, it's so easy to, to sort of stop working. And yeah. You're always waiting for that, especially right. when you're young and you don't feel like you have a lot of backup. Uh, careers in your pocket, you know, which I didn't. I didn't feel like I knew what else I would do, and so I, st I started pretty young, and I was I was fairly um, uh, neurotic and frightened that I was going to screw up my career and, mm. and and go away. And even when Clueless was a success, it kind of further sort of uh, um, uh, sort of created this idea in my head that. Uh, my career would stop, and then I'd have this one success, and it would be kind of some somehow humiliating. Mm. And um, uh, and so when Alan Ball and Six Feet Under kind of wrote that role for me, and that allowed me to kind of transition to be a grown-up uh, adult actor, um, it was uh, it was a real blessing. Uh, but yeah, there's a there's a there's a ton of a ton of times as an actor where you feel <coughs> that you're not good enough. You know, mm. You're going for something. You give it your all. You and then mm, you just don't get a call back. Right. It happens constantly, you know? yeah. And so uh, I, you got to be pretty tough skinned. It's not, it's not something I'd hope my kids do necessarily. <laughs> I, I can understand. Once yeah. you're in the midst of it, you're just like, you know what? If mm -hmm. You guys can avoid this. That's well, yeah. probably a better thing for you. Also, because it's pretty unclear why you're, if you, you know, if you don't get a job in in, in, in some other field, oftentimes it's because the preparation, the thing that you're creating, mm -hmm. you know, is not chosen for whatever reason. But when it's uh, acting, it's such a weird thing because you're kind of so subjective, judging right? the person too. Yeah. You're like, so it's just me? It's just right. all of me that you didn't want? <laughs> and, you yeah. know, as opposed to you try to make it about, oh, the, before the choices I made, but it's so often not that. You walk into the room and, you know, they've already decided. Um, uh, so, uh, so it's, yeah, it's definitely a, definitely a strange, strange thing to do with your life, but, um, 
I guess everything's kind of strange. Yeah, <laughs> you sure. know, just being a human being is kind of strange trying to, uh, you know, maintain a confidence and maintain, you know, a through line to it. Hey guys, last question. Uh, and can, DJ, can you ask Jeremy about Frozen Two? Mm -hmm. Sure. So Jeremy, in addition to FBI, you mm -hmm. got Frozen Two going on. Mm -hmm. How pumped are you about that? Yeah, really pumped. Yeah, that was uh, that was a big movie for my daughter, which was like three or four. It was. A, on rotation in our house, and it was a really good movie too. You know, uh, funny and, and amazing songs, but also just some kind of really mature themes. You know, about expectations and breaking free from those, and and uh, and so yeah. When they called me, I was super stoked. Um, and uh, the way they, I was really impressed with how they approached this this sequel. They really. Um, they came at it from uh, the concept of really understanding how, how this, the world fell in love with these characters and uh, trying to figure out how to let people understand these characters better. And they kind of took some really, really uh, bold choices, chances with the, uh, where they went with it. And so, um, uh, so it's, one of those, it's one of those movies that, you know, a lot of these movies end up being on rotation in people's lives who have kids. Totally, yeah. And I think maybe they also thought about that because this one, I've seen it twice mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think it's, it's chock full with a lot of ideas and some really mature themes, uh, but some really funny stuff too. And, and, uh, and so it's gonna be a, a movie that keeps on giving with every, uh, every showing. So um, I'm stoked to be a part of it, yeah. Good deal. Jeremy, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Check this guy out on CBS, FBI. For Jeremy, I'm DJ. See you next time here on The Sit Down.